Hey guys, so today's video is going to be my highly requested eyebrow routine. I'm constantly having people that I know, random strangers, people on the internet, just a whole slew of people asking me how I get perfect eyebrows, which I find so incredibly flattering. I don't have perfect eyebrows at all, but that is an awesome compliment to receive. I really just have some tips and tricks and different techniques that I use to kind of fool you guys into thinking I have perfect eyebrows. As you will see momentarily, I am not at all a professional. I have been filling in my eyebrows for like four years now, maybe five, I don't know. But I am human, I still make mistakes. I so wish I could just like fill in my eyebrows in two seconds and have them turn out perfectly every time. But that is not the case. I do make little mistakes here and there that I have to fix. But if you're new to filling in your eyebrows or wanna get started with it or just need some extra little tips and tricks, I hope this video helps you guys out. And if you wanna see how I go from this to this, then just keep on watching. All right, so this is me with my naked natural eyebrows. It's kind of frightening, I know. I don't think my natural eyebrows are too bad, but they're quite a bit thinner than I like. They just don't do a great job framing my facial features and they are quite a bit lighter than my hair color. I know a lot of people will say to go two shades lighter for your brow color if you have dark hair, but I just personally really prefer when they match my hair color. But the first step to having great looking brows is definitely to keep them maintained and keep them well groomed. How you choose to do that is totally up to you. If you want to go get them professionally waxed or threaded or you just want to stick to doing them at home yourself, that's what I do personally. No matter what way you choose to maintain your brows though, I strongly recommend investing in a really good pair of tweezers because unless you get your brows waxed every week you are going to have some stray hairs popping up that you're gonna to want to take care of the tweezers that I have and recommend are these little tweezerman tweezers I bought these two in a little set from Sephora they come with your classic angled tweezers and then a more pointed fine set of tweezers I'll admit the idea of spending 30 plus dollars on a pair of tweezers kind of made me cringe at first but it has definitely been worth the money especially since now I just solely do my eyebrows at home on my own it's definitely going to save me a lot of money on getting my brows waxed in the long run because that's what I use to do and I mean a good pair of tweezers they're gonna last you forever so I really recommend just biting the bullet and going out and buying a more expensive pair of tweezers because I swear they are worth it I bought these two in a set like I said because at Sephora a pair of tweezerman tweezers on their own are around like 30 32 dollars and they had this set of mini tweezers for like 29 dollars or something like that I think they say mini but they're literally not that much smaller than your average pair of tweezers if you can't find this particular set and you just want to buy one pair I would really recommend the more pointed pair of tweezers just because these give you such great precision you can literally grab a hold of the tiniest little wispy baby hairs that are growing in and they just work extremely well so now that I finished my tweezer rant we're just gonna go ahead and pluck a few of my brow hairs out I'm just gonna get my hair out of my face first I personally don't have really great lighting in my washroom so what I like to do is I'll take a little compact mirror and I'll go over to a window in my home and I'll just stand there and pluck my eyebrows there just because I can pluck my eyebrows in my washroom and I think they look really great but then I go outside and I catch a glimpse of myself in natural light or the harsher lighting at work and I'm just like oh my god what is going on here literally be so many hairs that I could not see at all in my washroom so this is what I've started doing I just come over to my window here and I pluck my brows here my eyebrows aren't too bad right now I did go in about a week ago and really clean up my brows but I still like to do a little quick cleanup a couple times a week just to really maintain my brows keep them looking really nice so I'm just going to pluck out a few straight hairs right now so I've got my mirror here in front of me and I'm just going to go ahead and pluck some stray hairs All right, so my camera just ever so conveniently decided to die while I was plucking my eyebrows, but I'm just gonna pick right up where I left off and continue doing this. I believe when my battery died, I was just starting to say how I like to go in and clean up my brows at least twice a week. It doesn't always happen, but if I remember to, I try to do that. Twice a week might seem kind of excessive to some people, but my favorite time to do it is right after I've washed my face and applied my moisturizer, because I like to give it about 10 minutes or so before I go in and apply my makeup. And so instead of just standing around doing nothing, I like to use that time just to kind of groom my brows really quickly. Fucking any really obvious stray hairs. I'm not gonna go too crazy today because I'm kind of in a hurry. And I don't know, I don't think they're too bad at the moment. Now that we have done that, we get to move on to what I actually use to fill in my brows with. Before I start talking about those products and everything though, I'm going to mention something that I have already done. And I do this every single day, and that is using a little bit of eyeshadow primer on my brows. That may seem extremely strange, but it honestly does help. I'm not sure why more people don't do it, especially when using a powder brow product like I've been doing recently. It just really helps to keep everything in place all day and keep it from like smudging around and going crazy. And it's not like I like glob huge amounts of this into my brows, because that would probably 
probably end up looking kind of gross. I smooth this over my lids before I do my eyeshadow, of course, and I basically just take a little bit of the excess and smooth it through my brows. And I do notice a difference when I do that, so if you've never tried that, I'd recommend giving it a shot. But in terms of the actual main product I use to fill in my brows, recently I've been using the Anastasia Brow Powder Duo in Caramel. Sephora describes this as a reddish blonde brow powder. It has this more red side on it and then a more neutral kind of taupey side. I mostly just use the more red kind of caramel side just because my hair is fairly warm toned at the moment. And my preferred tool of choice is just a thick liner brush. Liner brushes I like to use are a little bit wider and a little bit more dense than your average little angled liner brush. My mom actually had a liner brush like this that I always used to steal. She got it when we were in Paris and it was from a French brand and I could never find another brush quite like it. But I did end up finding this one from Lancome and it is the closest thing I've found. I think the kind of brush you use definitely depends on what kind of look you're going for. I don't go for a particularly natural look with my brows. I like them to look bold and defined. And I find this works really well because it's fast. It covers a lot of ground basically. I just find it makes the whole process a lot quicker. With that being said, if you do want to go for a more natural look, you might want to go for more of a traditional liner brush. I'll show you them in comparison so you can see. This is the Sigma E65. Yeah, like I said, if you're going for a more natural look, you might want to go more for something like this. Just because you can create smaller, kind of more brush-like strokes with it. What you use is totally up to you. Alright, so before I start filling in my brows, I like to just go in with a little spoolie or a little brow brush. I'm just using this little thing that's on my NYX Auto Eyebrow Pencil that I use sometimes. And I basically just go through and I just smooth through my brows, just making sure all the hairs are going in the direction I want them to. Alright, so then we get to start filling in my brows. Another little tip I have when you're filling in your brows, especially if you're new to it, is to have Q-tips handy at all times. They're just really nice to have in case you make any small mistakes. You can just go in with the Q-tip and kind of quickly clean it up, which you'll probably see in a second that I do a lot. I'm by no means an expert at filling in my brows. I'm just taking my liner brush, and like I said, I'm just using the more red tone side of the duo. And I first just like to start by just kind of sculpting out the tail of my brow. This doesn't have to be perfect because I will go in and clean it up afterwards. I used to start at the inner part of my eyebrow here, but a lot of makeup artists recommend to start from the tail and kind of work your way in. And I just switched that and I find it a little bit quicker, a little bit easier, but it's totally up to you. And then I just like to go in and trace this bottom part of my brow. Just to kind of start shaping my brows how I want them. And then I just go ahead and do the exact same thing on the top. And then I just go ahead and start filling in that space in between. And I like the inner corner of my brow to be a little bit more rounded in this area, so that's when I do this. I just use small tiny strokes just to create that kind of rounded edge. Sometimes I mix it up and I do it a little bit more squared out on the inner corner here, but that just depends what kind of look I'm going for. On an everyday basis, I do a more rounded inner corner, or not inner corner, but inner part of my brow. And then once I kind of have the basic shape of my brow laid down like that, I like to just go in with a Q-tip and just kind of smooth everything out make that little tail end of my brow a little bit neater and just kind of soften up the edges a little bit. And then if I overdo it a little bit, I'll just go in and reshape a little bit. There we go, that is one brow. As you can see, there is a huge difference between them. So now we just get to go in and repeat the exact same steps to the other side. As everybody always says, it is important to remember that your eyebrows are sisters, not twins. But with that being said, you do want to make them as close to each other as possible. For me, this part is a little bit tricky just because my eyebrows, they don't completely grow in identical. I kind of have to adjust the way I fill in my brows to make them as similar as possible. Alright, so I'm just going to go in again and kind of clean up this little edge here. I don't know why, but on this brow I always have an issue getting this under part of my arch. 
the way I like it to look. It's just like the powder just doesn't apply as well in that one little area. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with how they look just like this. And a lot of days I will just leave it at this and be good to go. But while we're here talking about brows and everything, I figure I'd show you every little extra step that I will sometimes do. So this next step is totally optional. But this is a step that really helped me, especially when I was new to filling in my brows. And it's just a quick little thing you can do just to really sculpt the brows, make them look really perfect. Like I said, I don't do it every day. I usually only do it on days when I'm really struggling with my brows and they're just not turning out exactly how I want them. So that is to take a cream concealer and just kind of trace the edges of my brows just to make everything look extra smooth and flawless. I like to use one of the brushes from the Naked palette because they are synthetic. They're really great for applying cream products. I like this end of it just to give really precise application. I just take the lightest shade in my Makeup Forever Camouflage Concealer Palette and I just kind of place this on my brow bone. It also gives a nice base for when I'm going to go in and apply my brow bone highlight in a second. Okay, I just apply this. Sometimes I'll go all the way around my brows. Like I said, it depends on how my brows have turned out that day, how messy they are. But I'm pretty happy with how my brows turned out, so I'm just going to quickly show you guys how I kind of sculpt out the arch of my brows. And then I do go in with the fluffier end of the brush and I just kind of blend that out. Or I do it with my finger, it just depends how I'm feeling. And I always wait until I am completely done my brows to go in and apply my brow bone highlight. Just because as you saw I do use a q-tip, it would be kind of pointless to do it first because I would just be rubbing that off in the long run. I just like to take a matte cream shade, it's just what I like to use as my highlight. And I just dust this under my brows. So it's just going to really help them pop a little bit more. Then I just take a fluffy brush and I just Make sure to blend this with my transition color just to keep the shape I like. And my final step when I'm doing my brows, once again, this isn't a step that I do every day. It just depends on how I'm feeling. I mostly save this for when I want to darken my brows up and make them a little bit more dramatic. But I just like to take my Anastasia Tinted Brow Gel in Auburn. This may seem excessive to some people, but I really hate the wand on this brow gel. It is a really large, like, football-shaped wand. I don't understand why they made this wand like this because it, I don't think it's really convenient for anyone's brows. But what I like to do... I have this old tube of the clear brow gel and it's like a mini tube. So I take the tinier one from this and I just kind of like lightly brush it on the tinted brow gel because this one is completely empty now. I've completely used that one up. And I just take that smaller one with that little bit of product on it and just comb through my brows. It just darkens them up a little bit and just ensures that all the hairs are gonna stay in place all day. I get to take my hair out of that clip now. So yeah, there we go. That is my complete brow routine when I'm pulling out all the stops and using all of my steps. Like I said, I don't do all of these steps every single day. Most days I do just do the powder and then I just leave it. I just head out the door and I'm good to go. The whole routine is for days when I really want to go the extra mile, like with the concealer and the brow gel and everything like that. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope some of you found it helpful and can take something from it, especially if you are new to filling in your brows. Don't worry if your eyebrows aren't turning out perfect or completely up to your standards. When I look back at older pictures of myself from when I started filling out my brow, I'm just like, dear god, what was I thinking? At the time I thought it looked good, but then when I look at pictures, I'm just like, can I please go back in time and show myself this video, please? Just maybe? Give this video a thumbs up if you are loving the bold, defined brow trend that everyone seems to be hopping on lately. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to be having a giveaway once I hit 1,000 subscribers. You're definitely going to want to stick around for that. If you have already subscribed, thank you so much. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.